welcome back. This week we're going to tie my articulated mouse. Uh, this is a pattern that's been in the design uh, with a little bit of a break over the last couple of years. Uh, for the better part of, uh, I would say probably five to seven years. I used to be really into tying and fishing mice. Um, got away from them for a little while. I wasn't fishing at night near as much. Not that you have to be fishing at night to fish mice, but that's the most prevalent time when you'll see folks fishing them. Um, but uh, you can fish them in the daylight if you want. It's just I started getting into the streamer design thing a lot more, and um, that kind of took over, and the mouse got set to the back burner. But now we're back to it, and I think I have a design. This is probably of the flies I've designed is on a food-based source. Um, this is probably the closest to a natural representation that I've ever come, um, just from an overall look and the way that it swims and I'll, I'll talk more of that a little bit later as we go um, but before I go and uh, get a hook in the vise here I'm gonna go over how to tie the furled legs or how to tie the legs um, I have just four pieces right here of MFC sexy floss I'll get this out this is a medium tan and a medium brown is what I'm going to be using here and I'm going to put these four pieces together to make the furled leg. Um, you can use just the straight rubber leg if you want as well. It comes in this little strip right here and you peel them off individually. They're a little bit too flexible for me. They're a little bit too stretchy and also if they've been sitting on the shelf in the shop for a while they could wind up being dry rotted and they will fall apart on you pretty quick. But these are the legs that we're going to be making right here. Um, and if anyone's ever tied or seen the Artie Mouse before, I 100% ripped this off because I tied them before the legs were so close to a representation or the closest to a, a natural representation that I've ever seen. There's no sense trying to uh, um, one-up that because you're just not going to do it. It's, it. it's the best representation that I've seen. Um, so. All we do here is we've got these four strands, two of each color. Um, I just tied an overhand knot right there. And then I'm gonna close my vise up and the knot is gonna be sitting down below the jaws of my vise. So now I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna do another overhand knot with the two colors, one there, and then I'm gonna do an overhand somewhat close to where I was before. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just as long as you're allowing yourself enough room to tie these, there you can see our two overhand knots. Let me see if I can get these in the camera there. The two overhand knots, and then what I'm gonna do is because all that stuff, the excess is gonna get in my way when I'm twisting them, I'm just going to cut those off. So now I'm going to take the one on my left hand side and you can spin these by hand if you want but I found if you spin them by hand as you're twisting them uh, they, they kind of come undone and they, they don't look as good. So what I use is just like I'm doing a, a dubbing loop or anything like that and it's tough to see in that back camera there but all I do is I just get a twist on here, I go counterclockwise with them, and then you can see I just have this rope with the variegated colors going through. So now I'll take and just throw that in with my hackle pliers. I'm keeping that in place, it's not going to move on me and it's allowing me to focus on just this right side here. Just take and spin that give it one more spin there you go and we have the same thing on this side right here so now what you want to do is spin these opposite of one another and there's only one direction that you'll be able to spin this and it'll get a furled section if you go the opposite direction if I were to go this way with them what would happen is these would wind up laying flat against one another because the spins are going against each other they're not going to flatten out 
and you're going to have this furled section. So then all I do is just one wrap around the other the whole way down till I feel my legs are the length I want them. My front legs on the front hook are a little bit longer than the back, so that's probably what we'll make here. I have one set up there, but they're a little too long. So let's see what we got. That looks pretty good right there. You can see that section that I have set in there. Now I'm going to take all of the tools out, disconnect those, and then just another overhand knot right there. And there you can see we have a nice furled section for our legs. There we go. And a real fly floating around there. Those bastards came out of nowhere the other day. Once they get in the video. That's alright. So, now that I have these sections, all I'm going to do is just take a cut right there. And you can see it has like actual little feet for, the, for your mouse. Really cool. Um, not absolutely necessary, but a really cool design, really cool look to it. It really looks neat once it's on the hook. Um, like I said, one of the best representations that you'll find for uh, legs on a mouse. So that's what I go with on these. No sense trying to do it any better than what's already out there. So now we've got a hooking device. We're going with a Gami B10S size 2 in the back. We're going to use a size 1 in the front. When I do the singles, um, the singles are either a 1 or a one aught. Typically a one aught is what I'll use on these. Let me readjust my vise here. There we go. So now I'll just get a thread base down. I'm going to stop my thread right at the point of the hook and then advance that forward just slightly. You don't want to start coming down the big aggressive bend on this on these gommies or your stuff will wind up slipping off to the side on you. Or it'll wind up running down the hook, I should say. So stay before the bend. Now what I want to do is just measure this out and I want my tail to end at the very end of my adjustment lever on my vise. So I'm going to take this now and peel this back. I'm going to go right underneath all of that fur, make a clean cut, get that off to the side. And then I just want to cut all of this off except a little bit. I just want to have just a little bit of a tag end on there, a little bit of hair on the end of that tail. So all I'm going to do is just trim this stuff off with the scissors. You can take a razor blade through there if you want. I don't really recommend it. It's a little bit easier with the scissors, but razor blade may be a little cleaner, but this will work. If you want to as well, what you can use uh, those old school flat loafer shoelaces. Um, those things work actually really well too and you don't have to cut all this stuff off of there. It may even be a little bit cheaper uh, in the long run. Those just flat, I mean they're about the same width and everything. You can throw those on there or if you want to use, you know, a round tail. I don't really see it being a deal breaker on what you use on this tail. This is just what I happen to use. So, measure that out to where my tail is the length that I want it. And just make a couple of wraps right there. You can see my fibers are ending right at the end of my lever there. I just want to bring one wrap around here just to secure that a little bit better. We'll have one wrap going all the way around the hook and not the hide of the rabbit itself. That'll secure it to the hook a little bit better and keep it from rolling side to side on you. So then we'll go through here, make a couple more good tight wraps on this. And we are ready to tie in our first stack of deer hair. So I'm just 
just going to take a chunk of this and this is going to be in natural today. Uh, I tie these in three different colors, gray, brown, and natural. Uh, the natural is probably my favorite color, I would say. Uh, natural or gray, and then I throw the brown in there, you know, just change things up. But those are the three colors that I tied in. You can go black if you want, whatever color you really want. Um, it's up to you, but these are the three colors that I typically tie these in. It's the three colors that I sell them in as well. So we're just going to throw this in the stacker. I'm going to get those evened out. You don't have to stack every single one of these if you don't want to. I like the way that it looks um, a lot better. It just makes things look so much cleaner. So I stack every single one, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. There we go. I'm going to measure this out. The first one's going to be a little bit shorter than the preceding wraps or the preceding stacks. I'm going to cut that off square and then set this right on the top and then just work my way right down through there. I'm using gel spun 100 so I'm not really pulling down on that too tight yet. I'm going to switch over to 200 for the front. But I'm going to just clear some of that out. I had a little bit of travel right there. But uh, there we go. Like I was saying before, I get one or two more of those out. Like I was saying before, with the uh, when, when you're stacking these, you don't necessarily have to, but especially if you're working with some really good deer hair and you can see these this real clean break between the, the body and then the tips right here, it just makes your fly look so much better on the vise when you have that nice clean break and it gives you a reference point the entire way back if you wind up stacking everything. So I tend to do that and uh, it just helps the fly look a little bit better. So now I'm gonna go with my first set of rubber legs. I'm gonna tie these in the back here. I'm gonna even these out and I'm gonna set that right in front of the deer hair. It's standing up like that. Set that down to the side, get it in place. There's one, same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna get that set in place and then tighten down. And you can see those legs just kind of flipping off to the side right there. When they start catching some water, they're gonna bounce around and everything. Really cool representation of, of these legs. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna take, and this is just a flesh colored cross-cut rabbit strip. This is going to be the underside of our mouse with the deer hair on the top, so it's just going to be stacked the entire way to the front. I really like these cross-cut rabbit strips. They're a little bit less bulky. If you want, you can throw one in a dubbing loop. I might do that toward the end, or you can go with the, uh, the bunny brushes if you want to make your own brushes. You cut all this hide bulk out, but you still get the, the effect of the, the rabbit. But for, for this purpose, for this fly, we're going to tie it with the cross cut. And when you're tying this in, the cross cut is off to one side. And you want to tie that in with the fibers coming toward you, the tire. I'm just going to cut a little notch out of that, reduce a little bit more bulk. And then two wraps is all I typically use. So there's one right there. I'm going to get one in the front, stretch that down, anchor it in place, and then pull everything else up to get a couple of good wraps in there. And then trim that out of your way. Now you can see it kind of pulled those legs back a little bit. They're more 
at an angle this way and obviously as the water catches them and all that it's going to push them they're going to do what they want anyhow but just for the way that it sits on the vise it's a little cleaner and it's out of your way some when you roll those back like that so now i just want to clean these up get a couple of good clean wraps in here clean this stuff up a little bit and also give myself a nice platform to tie in my next section of deer hair. You can see I cut that rabbit hide off of the top there. Let me get my hand out of the way. I cut the rabbit hide off of the top. That way it's clear all the way through on this top section and then underneath I have all of my rabbit fur covering everything up. So back to our deer hair. Same thing, I'm going to take another chunk of this. And run that through the comb, get any of your fuzz or your shorter fibers out of there. Drop it back in the stacker. Get a few taps on that, get everything nice and even. And as far as the the amount of deer hair that I use, I use the same amount through the entirety of the fly. I don't go heavier as I progress. If you want to, you can use less on the back half and it will allow that back half to sink a little bit more than what it does naturally. Um, I'll explain some of that here once I get this tied in. So now I just want to measure this out and I want the tips, the tan and the natural color of the tips right there to bleed in to the break that I have on that black section. So right here, I gotta go and Trim that. We go one, two, and then same thing. One, two, third, and then just kind of push that down. And we're clear. You can see how that just runs right into that back section of deer hair. Let me see if this is going to help turn that light on. I don't know if that's going to help or not. Eh, maybe. I looked at it before and I didn't like the way that it looked. I'm checking in the monitor now and I don't like the way that it looks. So we'll try it with that light. Hopefully that made things a little bit better there. Hopefully. Right in my damn eye, I know that much. There we go. Adjust it on the fly here. So now I want to go into another piece of rabbit and I'm going to go closer to the end on this one because it's it tends to be a little flatter on the ends and it doesn't create as much bulk. Some of those sections in the middle, the hide winds up being a lot thicker than uh, what you have on the ends and as I'm going to be approaching the front here, I want as little bulk as possible. So now I just want to tie that in, catch as little as possible, and then same thing, just two wraps. One and two. I still have a nice clear hook eye right there. Get that out of the way peel this back and then trim that. My eyes still clear, everything looks good. I'm just gonna peel this stuff up. And if you want, you can keep this in. I typically cut it out. Um, but if you want, you can keep it in and it'll give you a little bit more of a color break in there as well. But with the natural 
deer hair there's already enough color to break up so I keep it this way there's old Madison back there all right back to our deer hair same thing on this nothing new Just grab another chunk of this, same amount that we used before, clean it out in the comb. And then run it through your stacker. There we go. Everything's clear right there. Get a couple of those short fibers out of the way and then measure this out once again get your tan tips running right into the black on that previous section that you tied in and then cut that square there we go and just kind of peel that stuff back a little bit and then I want to set this right on top of that hide right before my eye and it's going to wind up looking like we're tying the head of a caddis right here We've got one wrap, try not to capture a lot of that, or try not to capture any of that rabbit. There we go, flatten things out how you want it. Got a third wrap, and then I'm just going to work my way right through that, and then there is the back section of our mouse. If you want to, you can take some time and trim this stuff out, get rid of some of those uh, really buoyant fibers but I haven't really noticed a huge difference and actually I think if you clip them a little bit tighter it creates a little bit more buoyancy so I keep that the way that it sits right there and then all I want to do is just run a whip finish right through that pull down a little bit it'll flare it a little bit more now I can catch my eye one two three same thing and we're clear now, there is the back section of the articulated mouse. Same as always, I'm just going to run some bead along through here, and I want one decent sized bead. Right like so, we'll get that out of there. Now to the unique part of this fly. If you've ever watched a mouse swim, they're actually really good swimmers, by the way. Well, they're, they're average swimmers. They're, they're a lot better than what you think they would be. Um, I may or may not have walked a few mice to the river and gave them a test swim just to see how they would do and to study them for research purposes. Don't go reporting my ass to Peter or anything like that. I don't want those crazy bastards on my ass but uh, I gave a couple of toss in the river just to see how they swim and just to study them and the one thing that I found that was consistent about them is the back half is down the heads up and they swim like this so in order to replicate that I'm gonna take and I'm gonna bend my hook at about a 30 degree upward angle so there you can see it right there. It looks like kind of a, some of the worm hooks that you'll see out there. Um, they're bent more toward the front, but they have kind of that uh, U-shape to them, I guess. But I'm gonna bend those just right in the front. This front section right here is gonna be all deer hair head. Um, the back half is gonna be just the same as what we have right here. So then I'm gonna go back to my 100, I'm going to tie this in right to where the bend starts or right to the point of the hook, whichever works best for you. And then I'm going to take this section, get my wires running parallel, set that right down there, 
three, give me a couple of good wraps. And then I'm gonna cut my distance down just slightly. I don't want a huge S swim out of these. I don't want I don't want like like how you how you see your bait fish swimming. I just want a little kick to the back end. And a lot of your movement is gonna come from that tail. It's gonna just move around with the current. Um, I don't want a ton of disjointed um, S swims out of these patterns. So I'm gonna tend to pull this in just a little bit more and it's just gonna be about half of a bead width for my connection right there. Let me twist this just a little bit then you can see I have about half of a bead width right through that section and that's all I'm gonna use for my articulation. So now I want to get that out of the way, make sure that these are running down the side. Let me turn that just slightly that way, it may be a little bit better to see. And then same as always with my articulation stuff, I'll just take that up to my bend, just shy of it. And then we'll trim that off. And where's the junk scissors at here? There we go. Cut that. And cut that side. Now we're good to go back to building our body on this. And same as before, I'm taking it right to where the bend of the hook starts. And we're going back to our deer hair. Now because I said that I was going to talk about this a little earlier, but I got distracted talking about other things. But because our uh, body isn't all deer hair, you'll see a lot of uh, mouse patterns out there that are deer hair on the top and the bottom. Phenomenal patterns. Um, they, they look great, but it doesn't quite give me the swim that I want. I want this back section more so than anything, I want this back section to be in the water, like below the surface a little bit. And because we're using the least boy or the least hollow portions of these uh, of this deer hair, it's going to give you that sink a little bit. Couple it with the fact that we've got some rabbit hair that's going to accept water and pull that back section underneath. That back section is going to sink for you after a while. Maybe not on the first couple of casts, but once it gets waterlogged, and if you're not making a bunch of false casts drying it out, it will sink for you, which is what I was after in putting these together. I like for it to ride about like this, and then that tail's just kicking in the back. You see these things on the water, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. If you've ever seen a natural swim, or if you've ever experimented like I have, just chucking mice into the river, <laughs> you'll... Uh, You'll, you'll see the, the similarities. There's a couple of mice made the sacrifice for this fly, so we'll, we'll give them some thanks, I guess. I don't know the hell, they may have made it back to back to the bank. Like I said, they're fairly decent swimmers. Unless a big old chop got a hold of them. But. Anyhow, enough of the rambling about me terrorizing mice. They don't serve much of a purpose anyhow, so. Anyhow. There we go. Measuring this out, it's running to the back, same as before. That light in the back blinding the hell out of me. Couple of firm wraps right there. And I've got to finish this fly up before the two young pups start losing their stuff. They're starting to get rambunctious, so that's my cue to hurry the hell up. So there we go. Once again, we have our tips running right into the back section. I could have got those maybe just slightly longer, um, but that would be me really nitpicking and everybody knows that I don't do that. I'm just gonna not look at that section. How's that? All right, back to our rabbit 
just going to get that tied in. I'm going to go one and two. Same as before. Not a whole lot new on this until we get to the front. Just trim that section right there. I'm going to peel these fibers back. And then I'm going to be about at my halfway point. Let's look at the underneath side. You've got the body, nice continuous body underneath. Deer hair on the top is nice and continuous throughout. Minus the one section right there that I wasn't happy about. But I'll be honest, it is a little bit tough. When you have the articulated portion right there, it's a little tough to cover that gap and get the seamless transition the entire way back. I could have done a little bit better, but that little gap that's right there, it is going to show up just slightly. But by the time we finish this up, you won't even know that it's there. Back to another stack of deer hair. You two knock it off. shortly these patterns do take a while to tie there's no question about that but when you get them and see them on the water it's all worth it spin your thread to the right same thing we're just working this and it's all on just like you're tying in a collar on a dungeon or a cougar or anything like that there we go it's all a half moon just right like that that way we have nice and clear room or we have a nice clear area to work with for the remainder of this rabbit fur and you can see we're just transitioning the whole way to the back. A couple of hairs that aren't going to be any good right there. But we have a nice clean transition going all the way to the back. Now, for this last section of deer hair, this is a pretty clean piece right here. This is really um, going to be easy to work with. Before I do that, I want to, this is the one step that I almost always forget is tying in these damn legs. I don't know how many of these I've put together. I look at it, I'm like, man, that's perfect. And I look at it again, no damn rubber legs. Throw it away. Can't, can't sell it. That's for sure. So, I either throw it away or it goes into the reject box and I'll fish it or who knows what the heck I'll wind up doing with it. More than likely I won't fish it. It'll just sit in that damn box forever and take up space. Because I'll look at it and be like, oh, there's no rubber legs. It's not going to catch any fish. Not true, but that's the way I look at things sometimes. So, got to have a complete fly. There we go. Once again, we're looking at the underneath side. you got those rubber legs sitting right like that. Um, because I do have a nice clean piece right here with this uh, let me see here with this rabbit hair or with this uh, crosscut rabbit I was gonna just tie it in and do it the way that I have for the rest of them but sometimes you're not always gonna have that nice uh, slender piece so I'm gonna show you another option uh, that you can use to keep this thing from building too much bulk because if you wind up going 
up the bend of the hook on this, you're never going to get your deer hair to set right. So what I'm going to do is show you how to tie this in in a dubbing loop. And because we're not using a ton of it, all I'm going to do is take this in my hands right here and I'm going to trim this off. Get it underneath there. Right like so. I have all my tips on the left hand side. I'm going to just set this in my loop, capture everything how I want it. Spread those fibers out a little bit. And now you're going to see that I'm not going to create a ton of bulk, but I'm still going to get the underneath section of my rabbit fur that I want. Set it right like that. Give it another wrap maybe. And then I'm just going to work these fibers all off to one side. You can wet your fingers if you want and it'll keep them in place for you until you can get your wraps in. So I'm just going to wet my fingers and I'm going to make some wraps right around here. It's easier if you wrap it by hand than it is using the rotary function. So let me just get that out of the way. And you can see we're starting to approach that bend. Just peel those fibers back. We're right on the bend now, but because I'm not carrying the hide, I can afford to get a few more wraps in there. Right like so, we're gonna get rid of that. And once those fibers dry a little bit, it'll fluff out. Regardless, we still have a nice clean under section. We have our previous wraps covered up. We're not interfering with our legs at all. And we still have a nice platform to tie in our deer hair head. So I'm just going to make some wraps right up the top on that angle. And I'm going to switch over some gel spun 200. I'm going to get that in place. Now it does make it a lot easier when you're tying this to just take and flatten this out. That way you're tying on a relatively flat platform right here as, to, as opposed to trying to tie on an angle that's going up against you. So we're going to continue with some, with that flesh or cream colored underneath and we're going to use some bleached deer hair. These are going to be trimmed relatively tight, almost like a bass popper. That way it is impossible to sink and you wind up creating that wake with the bent section and the closely trimmed deer hair. You're going to wind up creating a wake just like when a mouse is swimming, it's going to have that V trailing behind it. This is what you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to duplicate that with this. So now I'm going to take and clean these tips up or clean my deer hair up. I'm cutting the tips off and then I'm going right on the underneath side here. One, two, keeping everything on the bottom. I want one more wrap and then just pull that tight. Then we're going to go same thing. On the top, just continuing that shape that we're after. Once again, throw this in the stacker. We've got two stacks after this one, we're good to go. Do some trimming and this fly will be done. Let 
Measure this out once again. Transfer hands. And then cut that off square. That'll be the last one that you cut off square. Get that right in place. Just capture everything how you want it. Two. I've got two wraps on there. And that's not going to work. Too short. Too short. I wasn't going to be able to live with that. Way too short. Must have shifted a little bit when I had it in my hand. through this here. So no sense tying the entire fly and then messing up on the front. So no shame in backing it up and making sure that it's done right. Okay. Measure those out. Once again, we're going to work our way through here. I'm going to shorten my thread up just slightly because I'm catching some of that bleached underneath. This thing is going to fight me the entire time. Keep getting these shorter fibers. It's going to fight me. say that I'm going to edit this stuff out. But I never do. It wouldn't be a fair representation thinking that I'm doing this right all the time here. I screw things up more so than most anybody, I bet. Case in point, this is my second time at this because, like I said before, one of the things that I miss the most on this is tying in the rubber legs. I got halfway through the fly and realized I didn't put them on the back section. So, one, two, let me make sure my length is going to be good. I like it. Let's just flare that out a little bit and then give me one more wrap right down through there. Everything is clean. I still have room. to get my next two stacks in there. So now we're gonna use a little bit less material on this underneath side. I just want enough to cover up the eye, or get me to the eye, I should say. I've tied enough of these in the last couple of weeks. You figured I'd have this thing down, but every once in a while, especially when you're dealing with these shorter fibers on the deer hair, they will fight you a little bit, especially on the bend of that hook. Now that we're through the bend, we should be in the clear, but I don't want to jinx myself. So, same thing as before, we're working with the center of this bundle. Just one, two, everything's starting to flare pull down on the third. We're keeping this bleached on the underneath side. I still have a clean platform on the top to tie on. And then this is the only time that I'll really take an extra amount on the top section of deer hair. I will take a little bit extra here just because I'm leaving the uh, 
I'm not cutting this stuff off square and I'm going to use this for part of my head. So you can see I'm pretty much filling up the inside of that stacker. Getting nice clean tips lined up. There's a lot of deer hair right there. Get our tips lined up. Get everything set in how I want it. And then we're going to go one, two, using the same thread path that we did for the bleached, and then a third. Boom. Pull that down. It flares everything up. And we've got just about a completed mouse, minus some deer hair work for the head. Two, three, and four. Everything's clear. There. Last thing that we're going to do is go into the detail on trimming these heads. Now, I'm going to find my eye section. Everything's clear right here. And I'm just making a broad, general first cut. Be mindful of your rubber legs. Um, if you're using the uh, MFC stuff, the sexy floss, it's not gonna nick. They're not gonna come apart if you nick them. If you're using rubber legs and you nick those things, you're likely gonna use lose your legs. So I just want to clear that up on that bottom section. And then what I typically do is turn this back to where my head is facing the direction or to where the hook's gonna be in its natural orientation. You can see the slope already on that section. And then I just wanna cut into my collar. Not real aggressive, but I wanna cut down into the collar. Just get my overall shape here and I'm actually pushing down, coming down the slope slightly. Bring this back around. I'm gonna trim my sides up. Just give it kind of a rounded nose look. If you have to take some of this collar off, that's fine, depending on how you want the head shaped. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna bring this around. tie that or trim that off and then I really want to exaggerate the roundness on this top section same on the underneath side and I trim this a lot tighter on the bottom because like I was saying before it's almost like a popper. It's, it's so compact down through there, you almost have a popper effect on this pattern. And that, like I said before, is by design to keep it swimming in the proper orientation. Now I just want to trim any of those long guard hairs up just slightly free up my underneath side and then what I like to do is I like to follow under here and get just a nice flat surface so I'm actually following the bend of this of my hook that I put in earlier I'm following the bend, I have a nice flat surface, 
and what that's going to do is it's just going to act as a stabilizer as this is going through the as this is going through the water i can trim this up a little bit more i want this nice and round at the very front and then like i said it rounds out we've got our nice clean brakes not that it matters a whole lot but we've got our nice clean brakes right there from a fly tire standpoint you'd like to see that and then I can trim these up on the side a little bit I'm gonna narrow this out some let me bring this to you here so you're able to see what we're looking at but I'm gonna narrow this out a little bit but I've already spent enough time on this video you guys get the gist of what we're after on this one but there is my articulated mouse this is, like I said before, one of the closest representations to a natural food source that I've ever tied. Um, takes a while. Takes a while, especially when you mess up three times on the bend like I did. Only two times. I got it on the third. But it uh, takes a little bit of time to get used to tying these. Takes a little while to get them perfected. Like I was saying, with your color orientation working the way back right through here, you can see those breaks that go through that and it makes it look like just one continuous body. And then on the underneath side, um, if we pull this out of the vise, you'll be able to see that cream underside the entire way through. There we go right there. You got that nice clean cream section, our legs, everything looks just like a dang mouse and it swims like it as well. Um, a lot of folks are probably thinking, well, hell, I can tie a mouse in two minutes with just some rubber foam and I'm good to go and I can be out fishing and doing whatever. That's fine. I mean, they work. I'm not going to lie. Um, those, those work like the polywogs and stuff like that to where you just have some rabbit on the side and you lay some, uh, lay some foam over the top great they work great no challenge at all to a fly tire you could tie one of those with your damn feet if you wanted to um, no challenge at all um, I like something with a little bit of a challenge um, I like trying to make a little bit of a more realistic representation and in this case right here there's nothing that swims like this you can put all the rubber or whatever you want on any of those mice they're not going to swim as good as this I promise um, another one with the arty mouse uh, folks will say, well, I don't want to do the deer hair work. Um, I'm just going to put some, some foam sheets on there. And once again, it works great. I actually, <clears throat> I actually didn't like all the work that it took putting the foam stacks together and then cutting them and trimming them. And me being picky, I had to take a Dremel and make sure that it was seamless and all that stuff. I, I'm more comfortable with deer hair. I like working with deer hair. Um, I, 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 that's my personal preference. If you want to do um, foam on the front, if you want to do foam for the head, if you want to do foam for the entirety of it, by all means have at it. But uh, I, I wasn't going to phrase it that way, but it's, it's, it's just not as fun as a tire. It's not. Um, you know, a lot of this is a challenge, and then these these steps right here are going to help you on your deer hair collars, for your dungeons, for your cougars, whatever it may be. The more you work with deer hair, the more comfortable you get with it. The more you actually like to work with it. But have at it. Give it a couple of shots. Let me know what you guys think. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. I know this video was a little bit lengthy, but uh, thanks for sticking with me if you did through the entirety. Um, we'll do the single hooked version here in a couple of weeks, a um, couple differences on that one. But thanks as always for watching, and we will catch you next Wednesday.